Hello and welcome to Down the Slope. I'm Ewan and uh, we're recording on the back of a 1-1, re- I was going to say a 1-1 one, one record, uh, a 1-1 one, one draw uh, ho- home to Dundee United. Uh, I'm joined by Harry and Greg, um, just the three of us this week. How are you doing, Harry? I am all right now. Um, you can the rules. Hibs, Hibs play well. I'm happy Hibs play meh. I'm meh. What's the, what's the London backdrop looking like? Have you got a laptop in work? Um, Can the YouTube viewers see it? Oh, lovely. I know oh, you can. That is, that's there's, lovely, that. There's a nice bit of bridge <laughs> in the background for you, so can't, can't say I'm no good to you. <laughs> uh, Greg, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, no bad. Um, bit me as well as Harry, to be fair. Yeah. Right, so tonight we've got the Dundee United game, uh, and then we'll get on to on the, the first of two derbies that are, that are coming up, um, and then we'll do a little bit of chatting about the top six and whatnot, and what, what we think is going to what we think is going to happen as this this next week unfolds. Um, but what we'll start with is a little bit of news that's probably not um, not surprising at all. Um, it came out today that Kyle McGuinness is definitely out for the rest of the season. Um, I don't want to speak on behalf of you two, but I worked off the assumption he was out for the season anyway because I didn't think he'd been mentioned for long enough. So was it a surprise to either you or had you thought we were going to see him again? I wasn't expecting to see him like. I thought he was just done for the season as well. I um, <clears throat> thought it was pretty clear, to be honest, but obviously not. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a surprise, but um, it doesn't make it hurt any less. No, yeah. It still kind of stings. Just put a, put, to be <laughs> fair, though, right, in a weird way, put the song in the back pocket till the start of next season, get a decent start to next season and start belling out again. Or why not just Song. bring it back anyway? Because <laughs> we're not going to win the fucking league. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, right, Dundee, Dundee United. Wait, wait, um, sorry, um, just, just sorry. one thing I want to address. Um, I think that because he's not going to be back immediately, I think the, the smart thing to do is to pay him the compensation for the rest of his contract and ensure that he leaves the club. Um, I think that I've seen that a few times on Twitter today and I, I just want to fully agree with that sentiment that if a player who's very promising and looks like he's got a cracking career ahead of him can't stay fit for an entire season, then it means we just have to release him. So um, as much as I love you, Kyle, goodbye, um, according to some people on the Twitter sphere, which I think is utterly ludicrous, grow up. I do. I'm worried for Kyle McGuinness, to be fair. Um, I think he's missed three of the last four seasons. Liam said it might even be four of the last five in terms of when he was at St Mirren as well with injury. So hopefully, you know, not even from a Hibs point of view or how much he is or isn't costing Hibs, just he's, what, 23, 24? A very, very promising football player that seems to be hampered by what, like, whatever the issues are and just hope that whether it is at Hibs or not, which obviously we all hope it is, we've seen how effective he can be, but hopefully it's not something that sort of plagues him his entire career because it's not... <sighs> It's not a life for anyone, is it? You know, like, yeah, he's still going to be getting paid and stuff, but I can't imagine he's loving life while he's sitting sitting on hospital beds and sitting watching his team try and perform on the park. Um, another player i seen that was sitting on the sidelines at the weekend, he was at the game, was Kevin Nisbet. i seen that on sports scene. He was sitting right behind the dugout. Um, aye, between him and McGinnis, I think we might have won at the weekend if they were both fit. Um, right. Starting eleven. Can I, just, can I just chuck my wee bit in there? Aye, absolutely. About about how people just think that he's he's done, he's finished. Um, I think it's absolutely insane to say that a player's done or finished based off a few injuries. I know he's had his problems, but we've seen what he can do. We can see how how um, promising he is, how much he can add to the squad. That's the sort of player that Hibs need at the moment. But people are wanting with him because he's injured. You know, who knows if this Perfect. operation might might solve. The full the full problem. Um, mm. He is a player that deserves time though because he's had a shit time with injuries. Hopefully, we're at the bottom of that now, and he can come back next season and, and crack on. And whoever wants some relief staff through the season, just do yourself a favour and. No, at the end of the day, he's not even. He's what two years into a five-year contract. He's still contracted at the club for another three years. So, but people he, want he him is, gone. Yeah, he is, but he is going to be a Hibs player for some time to come. You know, unless he and let, the only way I can see Kyle again is not being a Hibs player at least next season is mm-hmm. if he has to retire. You know, like if it is that serious that this knee yeah. injury is going to keep plaguing him. But look, anyway, I, it was just worth mentioning because obviously it came out on uh, social media today between Kyle McGuinness and the club itself. Um, aye, Harry, starting 11, let's get into this Dundee United game. So we started with Kevin Dabrowski and goals. Uh, Matt Macy is still injured. Um, a back three of Rocky, um, 
and what I thought before the game was going to be Harry Clark. But Rocky, uh, Josh Doig and Paul Hanlon uh, making his first start for a while. Harry Clark making his debut left wing back. Joe Newell, Jake Doyle Hayes, Chris Cadden, Muller, Melkerson, Jasper. General Twittersphere atmosphere uh, was overwhelmingly positive at that 11 prior to the game. Were you one of them? I know. I, I think that um, it looked like a football team. Um, I think it's something that we've genuinely struggled a few times to put together is actually a starting 11 out of the players that have been available to select. So it was refreshing. And then the, the bench had a few options as well, which we could have brought on, which was nice to see. Um, yeah, I was I was very surprised when the players lined up to see Harry Clark on the left. Yeah, I didn't expect a, um inverted um, centre back that's that's definitely a new <laughs> one um but it worked quite well so no complaints afterwards i am um, i felt like at least bef- well before my first thoughts on it was it was going to be three four three with harry clark at the right the three rock in the middle uh-huh. handling the left josh doig on the left sorry left wing back row um but it felt like it was an 11 that actually no player was going to be out of position to play the system that because I think we all knew Maloney was, it was going to be a 3 4 3. Like, it felt like for maybe, I don't know if I'm right in saying, but probably the first time where no player was sort of a square peg in a round hole. And then Harry Clark lined up on the left, and we thought, oh well. Like, <laughs> Greg, what did, what did you think of the starting team? Was it one that you thought was going to have enough to win the game? I was buzzing, to be fair. <clears throat> I thought, if I line up 3 4 3 like that, I thought he would play. Clark, Bishiri, Hamlin as a back three, and then Cadden right mid, right wing back, whatever, Doig on the left. I thought yeah. that, that's really promising. That's what we want to see because we've seen how good Doig's been um, down the left this season, and then we always know how good Cadden is. I was a bit, I, I, I was actually pissed off when I when I built myself up to see that team, and then Harry Clark was on the left. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it looked like a back four as well. I was a little bit myth because surely you'd have Josh Doig out, out wide if you're gonna have anyone out wide. But yeah, I was building <clears throat> I was building myself for three four three, but I don't think that's what it was. Um, oh, I, I definitely felt it was three four three, but I think a lot of it depends on because I, I thought it was Cadden right back, <clears throat> Bishiri okay. Hamlin, Doig left back. Um but yeah, I sort of built myself up and then Six and two yeah. threes, really, in it? it depends no, on no, what you do with the ball. No, yeah, after you've built it off. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, the, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I thought we started all right. You know, like, well, the United United scored in about the 10th minute, but I thought we'd made a pretty promising start to the game, albeit without really doing too much. But I thought we were moving the ball well. There was quite a good some energy. What For me, what you would expect from a team that had day players involved in it, Harry, you know, like your, your Mullers, your Jaspers, Melkerson, Cadden, like there was, there was some nice one twos, Greg, that probably would have been down in front of you. Yeah. Um, and that's mm-hmm. sort of bottom right corner of the West. Harry Clark was starting to look a little bit of a threat on the, uh, on the left side. I do think he took some time to settle into the game though. Um, and then we sort of got hit. There's there, I just, I thought we started okay without, but there's no real chance to talk about. It. And then we sort of got hit with, that's what you call it, sucker punch with United's first real attack, second phase free kick. It, it felt like a little bit of a throwback to the start of the season. I just just one thing. I know we uh, we should try and talk about referees less, but there's a couple incidents we need to talk mm-hmm. about. Obviously, for most goals, you could point back, but that decision for the free kick is absolutely horrendous. I don't know if you've seen it back, but yeah, Cadden goes across and completely outstrengths the boy, gets the ball cleanly. Oh, yeah, and the referee yeah. gave a free kick. Like, I didn't realize at the time, like, I was annoyed at the time, but I didn't realize that created the goal until I saw replays back. Um, but yeah, no, the as, as you say, um, back, back to crosses being a problem, it was utterly pathetic to be realistic. Um, Harry Clark showed why he shouldn't be on the left hand side when mm-hmm. in a defensive situation. Um, Joe Newell gets absolutely gymmed. Paul I think, jo- gets... I think Joe Newell does a as good a job as Joe Newell can up against yeah, Butcher. You know, like yeah. it's. I think he, I think he does well to even, you know, credit to. He could have easily switched off and not been picking up anyone. You know what I mean? Like it was the second phase. I think it. Um, Funnily enough, it was Jack Ross that was on sports scene, and they were looking at the goal, and Joe Newell was actually defending the back post when the ball came in in terms of the, the first free kick and he's been wise enough to pick up instead of everyone else is pushing out but I, I still think he 
at the time, I thought I was one of the centre halves. So I was really critical at the time. I didn't know who had lost that first header. So I was like, whoever lost the first header has to win it. But when I seen it was Joe Newland who he was up against, I thought it's a bit of a mismatch. But uh, Paul Hanley has to do better there as well. I've, 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 like, I get what you're saying, but I always think if you're a defender, you need to anticipate the ball better. And I don't think Joe Newell anticipated it well enough. And Paul Hanlon, it's just frustrating because I thought he had a pretty good game aside from that. But yeah, just not good enough. I thought he, he just got stuck under it a bit, Greg Hanlon, didn't he? You know, like it's, I think obviously the ball's come in from the left side. He's moving back. Like, you know, like he's, he's never really set to go and attack the ball at any point, is he? Yeah, but he's playing the game for a number of years now at this level, should be aware. Um, absolutely disgusting for Harry Clark the way that he attempted to block that. There was zero energy from him. <clears throat> there was no aggression to press the ball. Um, it's come over. And again, you, you've already made one mistake with letting the ball in the box. Um, you lose the then, first header and then it's... And then you lose the first header. And do you know what? Nobody there has done well enough for me. Yeah. Um, I think Dabrowski also could be yeah, commanding his box slightly at better. The, at the game, I certainly was critical. I think I texted you guys in the chat after the goal went in. Like the first two that I highlighted were Clark and the goalie. I don't mm. know if watching it back, I put as much on the keeper, but I felt I'd, the first cross. I don't think he can do anything with. I think it's a pretty decent cross in, yeah. but when the ball's <clears throat> looping after the second one, I'm not sure. But it was just—I don't know if it was one of them. Just the way the ball went in the net, it just mm. looks a bit like it looks worse. He's he's dived and just yeah. it sort of looped in. I don't know. You know, at the time, I just thought he could have done a little bit better. But on the I back know, of that, I'm not, I'm not sure. I know that Harry said that it's not a free kick, but it, it's my bug there when. With managers and well, we defend the free that. kick as well, don't we? Like, <clears throat> yeah, so, so 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 you defend the free kick that's not a free kick well enough, but it's that second phase where you're not aggressive enough to get out, you don't show enough desire to, to go and attack the ball in your defensive area, and and that's the issue for me is that there's really been nothing there, no aggression or desire to, to go and attack that and win it. Um, we've let the ball come in and we've just sort of. Yeah, I think yeah, I think for me the honest. biggest frustration is the lack of. <clears throat> stopping the ball in the box. I feel like we've mm-hmm. been a lot better, a lot, lot better with the um with that side of things. Probably entirely under Sean Maloney, you know like, I think yeah. for whatever whatever criticisms we want to have of the team under Maloney, I think generally we've been pretty decent at the back. Um I know we just shipped three goals at Aberdeen, but obviously two of them were penalties. Um and the third one, well, to be fair, the third one actually as well was pretty poor. Probably the first goal that's been quite poor. There's not too yeah. many goals under Maloney that we've conceded that you thought were really, really awful, awful goals, I don't think. Um, but yeah, the, the, the lack of... is Can that be... I don't know how much it plays into it, but obviously Harry Clark's naturally stronger on his right side. Can that be... Is there an element of body position comfortability in terms of he's not wanting what to go down the outside? Like, when it comes to like blocking crosses and stuff on his left as opposed to his right, or should that not really put me? I don't know if that is a thing or not. What... No, I don't think it is. I mean, <clears throat> you, you're a defender. Ultimately, he's a defender. He should be doing everything he can mm. to stop that, regardless of what side it is. Yeah. Um, you can show players inside, you can show players down the line, but ultimately you need to try and do more to get yourself in the way of that cross. Yeah. Um, the side doesn't really matter for me. Um, so yeah, I, ju- I just think he's not he's not done well enough there. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Right, I, I, Harry. After the goal went in, I thought we 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 were a little bit stunned, if you like. I don't. Know, but I felt fairly quickly we did take control of the game, or at least take control of the ball and take control of possession again. And but again, similar to how we started the game, without maybe creating too much, there was a chance though. Um, just a couple of minutes after, I think it was just a couple of minutes after the goal went in, Jake Doyle Hayes has played a pretty good pass through the lines to Jasper. Maybe a little bit over hit, it means Jasper ends up taking the ball sort of just wide of the six yard box. From just shoot, or like you know, like I think he's got enough time to know that Mel Carson's not there. You know, like it's like you know he's run like he's looking up like it's a good chance to win it. You know, like from that scenario, even shoot, but. Or is there, should there be more emphasis on Amelkers in there to make sure he's getting across the front post like he did at Motherwell? 
And that, it's, it's tricky because it's a brilliant ball through from Jake Doyle Hayes, to be fair to him. Um, but yeah, no, my, my instinct was why didn't he shoot? Um, I always think that if you shoot and you put it across the keeper, the best situation for them is he saves it. Like, you know, and that just leaves problems in the middle of the box, but hopefully if Melkson isn't up to speed, he can then react fast on the defenders. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it was it felt like a wasted chance. Because as you say, it was, it was a good chance on the front of it and then it ended up being nothing. You've got more criticism probably of a player sh- passing and not shooting, and but that pass not coming off than shooting yeah. and not going in. You know what I mean? Like, you're not, like for me I'll, anyway. If you're in a good position and you can put a shot on target with power, I'll very rarely criticise the man, um, like the player taking the shot. I always think that shooting's the best option if it's a clear cut chance, mm-hmm. which I think it was. I think oh, for me as well, Mel- Melkerson's got two two centre halves or two defenders either side of him. So it's going to take a fucking miracle for him to get the ball there. Uh, the ball's going to have to be perfectly placed in, in an area where he can slide in possibly and get it, but it's very, very difficult to do. Whereas with a few stands, if you know, the goalie was in a position where Jasper could get a shot on goal, if it, if it doesn't go in fair enough, it, it's going to bounce somewhere though if the goalie gets something on it. So mm-hmm. why not just take the risk and have a shot? If it, if it bounces off him, then... Okay, if it goes in, then perfect. So yeah, I don't, well, I don't understand the way that he's passed that. I just think that you need to be having a shot, be greedy. Yeah, well, we're on the subject to Jasper. Obviously, we're like, we'll try and stay on track with the game as much as possible. But there will be a sort of couple of tangents, obviously, as ever. But what did we make of Jasper's performance? Obviously, he did get hooked at half time. Now, a couple of caveats. Maybe Sean Maloney did say in his pre-match conf- uh, press conference that it was sort of going to be a. Saturday morning decision on him and Josh Doig because they both or was it Josh Campbell actually maybe not Josh Doig yeah. they both came back with knocks like and Jasper took a bit of heavy one early doors and um, for me that was probably his worst game um in terms of just productivity I know he's maybe done a lot of looking good and maybe not and still flattered to see, deceive a little bit but I did think just a little bit off it at the weekend I thought I don't think there's yeah. any probably about it. I thought he was pretty poor. I think if he'd done that on his debut, a lot of the fans wouldn't like him. Um, I'm glad he's had a few good games first, though, because if he plays like that every week, then he won't stay in the team. See, see for me, look, he's what, 21, 22. Yeah. A lot of people are criticising his end product. Give the boy a wee bit of time to adapt. and you know, He's had a, a wonderful game at Mullerwell. Of course, people are going to expect every week, but like, let's be honest, there's a reason he's not. He's not at Fulham. Yeah. He's at, he's at Hibs. Right, so let's just get that out there. Be patient with him. He's a player. There's something in there. A lot of people want about his end product, rightly so. At times it's poor. But the boy tries to get on the get on the ball and make things happen and take players on. And fans want to see that. The boys try to do that. He's had an off game. You know, let's Move not on. let's not shit the bed over it, to be honest. So, yeah. yeah. Um, right. So as the half progressed, I felt um, Harry Clark really, really, really grew into the game. Um, he obviously had a pretty good effort from long distance on his right peg um, that was well saved by Seagrest. Um, then we probably... So it's, I think we actually faded out the half as the half went on. I felt we probably scored at potentially our worst period of the half. You know, I think like, the game was sort of pittering out to half time. And, uh, yeah. But... One thing I felt throughout the half was that we were getting numbers into the box. Um, there was a few occasions where we didn't, but you know, a lot of the time we did have a good four or five players in the box. The goal came when we only had two in there. Uh, wing back to wing back, I'd spent the full first half being like, why the fuck's Harry Clark on the left side? He's not got a left foot. And then he uh, very nicely, calmly slots, smashes it into the bottom left side. Now, Greg, I'm not going to come to you because I know you missed mm-hmm. it away for a pie after Paul <coughs> Hanlon had Paul Hanlon me, had put that pass out from the... Do you know what it is? I just had to, I had to get up and go after that. That was enough. <laughs> so, Paul Hanlon had just put the ball out for a throw and Greg had made his way down to the concourse. But, Harry, what, what did you think of the goal? Really, really good finish. Hi, yeah. No, it was um, the composure that you'd expect to see out of a striker, to be honest. Um, I thought that he took the ball on very well and it was a, it was a great finish. Um, it's, it, I think we've actually got quite a few parts in the team. Like, if you look back at Mitchell and stuff, I think that when we get a Yeah, this is what side, I wanted to like, come on to here, yeah. yeah. like I've, sorry, sorry for tangenting about it. Okay. But, yeah, no, I just, I just think that we've had so many, like, good first impressions and, it's, and then I think just after the goal he went down injured and I was like, surely yeah. no again. But, he stayed for the rest of the game, so hopefully he's not doing too bad. 
<laughs> well, just what you brought, it was, a, it was a great going for And I'll be honest, for me, I thought going in at halftime level was the least we deserved. Now, I don't think we were great in the first half, I think. But Dundee United weren't great. And to be fair, but they had a chance that we've not mentioned. Um, again, Harry Clark didn't cover himself in glory, actually, for this either. M- Muller got sort of turned on the byline, and Harry Clark just went the total other direction. The boy got to the byline with nobody there. Um, and Cadden done pretty well at the back post. But I thought we were more than value for at least going in the half level, especially on the... I don't think either team really created much. You know, like I would say it was about well, both teams flashed one across the box and both teams scored a goal. But like, you know, like and there was pretty much nothing else in the game. I didn't think, but we were we definitely had more more of the ball. So I thought going in at halftime was about right. But what I wanted to mention, Harry, you've said there. What, what from what we've seen of Harry Clark in his ninety minutes, and what we've seen of say Dimitri Mitchell, obviously two wing backs that were signed by Sean Maloney, and he wants to play this three four three. I feel like we have played our best football under Sean Maloney when they two players have been available. You know, I, think, I actually thought we were okay at the weekend. I thought, especially in the second half, and I thought that spell where we had Cadden on the right and Mitchell on the left, um, I don't I don't think maybe the results reflected it, but I thought in terms of a threat, at least going forward, we've definitely looked a lot better with the wing-bats that Sean Maloney signed. Do you think they're, like... Can we play three four three if they're not available? Basically, see, see for me, right? I think what he's going to look to do is he's going to look to try and create overloads on the left and right side. I think mm-hmm. what you might find is that um, possibly Hanlon will play on the on the left side of a back three where, where Percy, I think he plays his best football, um, and he also likes to get forward and join in the attack um, at times. Um, on the right, I think we'll see Harry Clark and Chris Cadden. Um, Harry Clark right side of half, and Chris Cadden on the right. I think I think he'll look to create overloads on on both sides, um, but a lot of that is dependent on the midfield as well and how they cope with things. Um, but I think the front three could be very fluid. People are losing their shit about Sean Maloney. I think you need to give him time. He's had countless injuries. He's not had his injury problems to seek, to be honest. Um, I, I think I think we we see parts of games where we look good. We do. We also see parts of games where we look shit, but. We need, we need to stop just trying to cane managers all the time. You know, the boys come in with an idea. It's his first managerial job. You know, I, I think we'll come good, though. I think that the way he wants to play probably suits us. Might not suit playing against every team in the country, but I, yeah. I'm still looking forward to seeing what happens. I think that we've got a good set of players there. Maybe need to add to them. Maybe need to get some back fit, but I, I think we're, we're actually in an okay position. Um, Aye in terms of the way that we play the game. Not in terms of league position, but I think in terms of the way that we play the game um, and how we want to play the game and how he wants to play the game, I think it's quite positive at the moment and it's we just need to sort of see the season out at this point and then go again in the summer. Yeah. Harry, do you think it's crucial that we manage to keep, say, a Chris Cadden and a Harry Clark both fit for the entirety of the rest of the season if we are going to play with these wing-backs? Yeah, I was going to say, I think the main thing, is, I think Greg's spot on with the overloads. I think it's just players that will carry the ball as good as Lewis Stevenson was when he was in the team, he's not the type of player that will bomb up and down the wing, whereas when you've got Clark on the ball or Mitchell on the ball, they'll happily take the ball and just run at players. And it's just so yeah. refreshing because um, it provides a directness that's been lacking throughout the whole like last couple of seasons. The thing is, people are like, was it this bad under Jack Ross? We got absolutely papped by a Ross County team that was bottom of the league. We got absolutely papped by a Levy team that was then bottom of the league because Ross County had just beat us. Like Things were terrible at the end with Jack Ross. Wait, Stop wait, trying um, to... I, I know it was it was Leon that tweeted it, so hello, Leon. How you doing, Sam? Um, I know. I th- Leon tweeted it as a question, and, and whereas you know people what? were tweeting and, it back and, as an answer. I was like, come on. And do you know what? Right. Jack Ross also got beat at Fiena on Sunday night at Easter Road there in the season. So, yeah, it was worse under Jack Ross. Right, anyway, we don't need to honest. revisit old ground. Half time, you and Henderson came on for Jasper. Um, I was the one change, no real change in system or anything like that. Um, I thought, in general, the second half was actually pretty good. Um, I think, all, as I don't know how many times we are going to say it this season, but all that was missing was a goal. Um, but I know we'll, we'll get into talk about the half, but for me, if we'd scored two or three goals in the second half, I don't think Dundee United could have complained. I thought we battered them in the second half, to be honest with you. I don't know what your Dundee thoughts United are. Dundee United are an absolute gang. An absolute gang. Um, yeah, look, I, 
I, I was at the end of the game, towards the end of the game, I said that we were weak in every aspect of our game. Um, <clears throat> that was maybe a little bit harsh, um, but it was mainly towards sort of the, the forward areas where Melkerson's had a great chance at the back post. Um, we bit, we bit frustrated with the fact that we didn't get a penalty from Miller because that's a pretty much a stonewall penalty. Um, but I felt again we get balls in the box, but we don't get them in the right areas of the box where players are. We sort of just hit and hope. Um, I just feel like we need to be a little bit more aggressive in the final third. Um, have pop shots for anywhere. Just get shots on goal, to be honest, because at the moment we can't afford the luxury to try to pass the ball through teams, um, especially in the final third. Get the ball on the feet, have pop shots. I don't really care. Just just try something. Um, mm-hmm. Because we had four shots on target and, and 21 shots. and It doesn't really, doesn't really do it for me, to be honest. We need to be doing a lot more. That must be made up of a lot of block shots, though, right? Mm-hmm. I'm assuming, like, it not, like, it must like, have been because, because I don't there know was if only five shot. shots. There was five shots off target, <clears throat> four on target, and twenty-one total. Right. Okay. Right, Harry. What did you make of the second half, mate? Um, obviously, we did, we sort of started well, and then we had that little. Sp- I don't know what you call, like spell where we had sort of three or four shots in the block box or blocked. Like, I thought we made a pretty decent start to the half, at least. Yeah, no, um, I, I tweeted at halftime. When was the last time we were actually half entertained time. by the football um, at Easter Road? And I actually thought the second half was pretty entertaining. I thought that we played some really nice football. I think that we used the width that we'd done really well against Motherwell away. Um, I thought that Harry Clark was really in the game. I thought Cadden played really well too. Um, there was maybe a couple of times in which the midfielders could have got the ball out their feet a bit quicker. Um, but apart from that, I thought we were really good. As, as we said, um, it seems like a cliche now with Hibs. Um, all we were missing was a goal or two. Um, mm. And if we'd won that game 4-5-1, <clears> I think then the United could have complained. We absolutely battered them in the second half. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to start with the penalty thing. I just It winds me up. Dundee United's tactic was give the ball to Tony Watt, who will run up the pitch and fall over without contact. And then yep. he'll get free kicks for it. And then a couple of times he was waved off for diving. Whereas Muller's in the box, cuts inside, absolutely does his man, who leaves a leg hanging there. Um, connects with knee to knee with Muller. And for some reason that was, who was it Robertson? Yeah, Don Robertson, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. He just wanted to be the main character, eh? He was like, oh, I've not got enough attention today. I'll just give this guy a book and when he's in the box and that'll make me look cool. Because there's there's no justifiable reason to stare at a guy getting brought down in the box and booking him for diving. It was pathetic. And it was it was late enough in the game that would have been the winner. 100% would have been. Yeah, and the thing is as well, now, again, we're getting we're, go, we're going all over the place here. Um, but about 20 minutes before that, uh, Tony Watt blatantly dived. He, and he and he didn't give a free kick. He gave Hibbs the throw, and rightfully so. He gave it the big, the big, the big no, the big like the big, the big dramatic cross of the hands. And but then he didn't him. book him. And by then, the, the law, he should have been booked. Well, yeah. Well, he, well, he gets that because he booked Chris Miller. Well, the law doesn't <laughs> apply to everyone, though, does it? Like, and it just, uh, it just maybe that's why we're the most uh, booked booked per fouls because we get booked when it's not even in for we're not even making fouls we get booked for fucking diving all the time um look greg what i want to ask actually before we get your thought on our penalty shout is the two penalty shouts um dundee united's um it would have been right in front of you um what did you think at the game and then having seen it back what the handball yeah play the lost states it's not a penalty but were you that calm at the time yeah Mate, the way good, the way it was you, yeah. absolutely the way it was rattled towards Doig, there was absolutely no chance you can do anything with it. I can't mind who it was, but someone absolutely rattled it. I want to say Hanlon, but I don't know if I'm just talking about that. No, no, <laughs> it, 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 he cleared across and it yeah. Doig. Yeah, yeah that, that it's not a penalty because it's come at some speed and it's it bounced up, so let the losses, it's not a penalty. Um that's how new that's how new phrases let the law. Um yeah, it's not a penalty. I, I don't know why they were claiming it. Anyone that knows the game, watches the game week in, week out, knows that's not a penalty. Um, so, yeah, I think that was a bit hopeful on their part, on their part but nowhere near a penalty. And what was your um, thoughts on the Hibs penalty? Um, at first, I thought there's no need for him to go down if, if he's not been hit. Um, and I've seen that again, it was definitely a penalty. 
it's like me on me sort of thing. Um, maybe Muller was a little bit dramatic, but if he's been, if there's context, it's a penalty. So another frustrating decision against us um, when I thought that our play probably merited a goal in the second half. I thought Dundee United came out and towards the end of the game, but they didn't do enough to, to win the game. But I thought in the second half they're a bit more positive, a bit more direct. Um, yeah, I think maybe it's just deserved that goal, but I, I don't really know what Don Roberts had seen. I mean, uh, Harry, you're, you're could, 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 could it could it be that Muller's bigger than the opposition player? Because I I I don't know. I, I fail to see why he's not given it. Really, I don't. I just I just don't know. It's a clear penalty. He's in the right position for it. And there we go. And I think if he sees that back again, he still doesn't give a penalty. So, but Varro Var- apparently sort all the issues out. Well, this is Harry. You 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 obviously at a time. Obviously, having to watch online, like you didn't have any doubt, did you? Though that it was a penalty, like you know, like it was like. What is the argument that maybe there wasn't much contact and he sort of dives after it? Is there any argument? Because the thing is, for me, like he's in a good position to shoot. That's the thing. Like if he doesn't go down, all he has to do is pull the trigger and score. Like the boys genuinely stopped him from taking a shot at goal. That's what winds me up. There's literally nothing in that that shows that it shouldn't be a penalty. I just don't understand what the referee's seen. It's like mm-hmm. all the only the only logical explanation I can think of is the fact that he wants some attention that he's not got during the game so far. He thought, screw it, I'll give this guy a book and that'll be me in the in the headlines. Aye, I, 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 it is a penalty. Is, and you know, and this is the thing. I, 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 it's easy for us to sit here as Hibs fans and say, yeah, Dundee United shouldn't have had a penalty, and we should have had a penalty. But ultimately, when you look at the when you look at the rules for the first one, it's, it's not for their one. And when all I would say is go and look at the Ryan Kent penalty, Easter Road, mm-hmm. and compare yeah. that to the Chris Miller one. <clears throat> it's knee on knee contact, probably not much. Penalty given for one, penalty not given for another one. Play like, and it's poor. It really, it really is poor. Um, then I in the word but consistency. Yeah. Really, please. Just and then consistency. Ryan Kent gets so it doesn't get his penalty. We get our don't get our penalty and Tony was booked for diving but there is no consistency so. and then between the and just day two incidents themselves you're obviously <clears> you're assuming that Hibs, Hibs score the penalty but that's three points over the two eh, sorry four points no three points over the two games uh, that you've missed out on and you'd be sitting in fourth that's place six. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. speaking of that's top six Elias Melkerson was that top six was it is that top six gone with that mess, Harry? The thing is, like I didn't want to dig the boy out. He's really young. Um, obviously he's still adapting to the game here, but if you're a natural born striker, you finish that. I don't understand. The first rule you're taught as a striker is if the ball's coming to you, lean over the ball and put your foot through it. I don't know how he's managed to get to that high over the bar. He's not far out. Um, I know he's had to kind of slow his run a bit to See. make sure he gets on the ball but he needs to finish that. If, if that's in training, I would expect him to finish that 10 times out of 10. In a game, I'd expect him to finish it 10 times out of 10. I um, I said that after the game to you, didn't I? About Aye, I thought he was yeah. waiting on it, but actually watching the sports team back, it's worse. I thought the game he was standing waiting on it. He was still sort of stepping onto it, which for me makes it easier if you're stepping on it. I think if you're standing waiting on a ball coming at you, you are more likely to, but I actually thought he tried to side foot at the ground and all, but he's not. He's really just leathered it. Like, I just... The thing is as well, we've had a few stinking misses this season. Like, I genuinely think it's on a par with the Kevin Nisbet Celtic Park one. Like, It's just bad. Oh, yeah. It's just Aye. bad. Yeah. Is, that that was top six. You were just honestly waiting on them putting it in. And Miller's I done so well. Yeah. Miller done so well to get down the wing, to get cut inside, to play the it's ball. It's a great ball from Henderson out late on. Yeah. Find them, um, let's like say Muller does well, gets himself in the box, good ball across, and well, yeah. Look at the end of the day, if you score that, it's not you're not guaranteed top six, but you're sitting in fourth place, and it's some chain of results for you to not end up in top six, especially given the teams that are playing each other. In fact, it maybe would. Nah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't mathematically, that. but it would pretty much confirm it. Like, nah, nah, it's. Ugh. it's I a don't bad one. Doing it now. 
it's a bad one. It's a, it is a bad one. Um, it felt it at the time as well. You know, like I to- I'd done that total like lean. I had my like lean back in the chair, like just looking at the top at like top of the stand. Like, how the fuck has he missed that? Like, that is the. And do you know what? I think if you could sum up our season, that's it. And that chance, but even just in a ninety-minute game, it's that. Mm. You know, I think I think that like plenty of chances to score goals, not taking enough of them and conceding a poor goal. You know, like really, I think a lot of times this season, and I include Saturday, and a lot of times this season we've been shit. But I think a lot of times this season we've actually not been that far away from being pretty good. Like you know, like like we've actually not been that far away from being really know that bad at football, but for whatever reason, whether it be slackness at the back in some games where we've conceded a couple of goals, whether it be games like the weekend where we should be scoring multiple goals and we're not, like at various points this season, it's felt like we're trending to giving someone a humping, and yeah. the longer the season goes on, it's no coming, and now it's. Well, it's crunch time now, isn't it? Right. Well, we get on to it. Right. Well, the derby. The, I'm going to say it. This could be the derby I've least looked forward to in a long time. Yeah. I'm in a it, long, to be long time. I'm sure on Saturday. Dre- right dreading it's probably not the word. Like, I'm, I'm being dramatic. Dreading it's not the word. <laughs> it's just, it's all you think about a week uh, and, and you actually can't see us winning. Uh, usually I'm like, oh, do you know what? You know, if I know how, uh, like, might sneak it, but at the moment I'm like, no, nah, we've got no mm-hmm. chance. Right. As soon as the week goes on, I'll have us winning like <laughs> seven nil or something. But no, nah, the moment. As soon as this podcast sure. goes on, you'll have us winning in your score prediction. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, right. I don't think so. Before we get right into the derby, the top six. This is this is a state of affairs right now, right? United fourth, forty points minus six goal difference. Motherwell, 5th, 39 points, minus 12 goal difference. Hibs, 6th, 38 points, minus 4. County, 37. Levy, 37. Both on minus 8. County, 7th, due to goals scored. Aberdeen, 9th on 36. Better goal difference than us at minus 3. And St Mirren, 10th, 36 points, minus 16 goal difference. Aberdeen are at home to Ross County. Dundee United are at home to Dundee. Motherwell, are away to Levy and St Mirren are at home to Rangers. I'm going best case scenario here and worst case scenario for us to still make top six, right? Win and you're in. Win and you are in the top six. That's that mm-hmm. that's that's fact. Lose and you still get in if you don't lose by four and Levy and Aberdeen draw. And Motherwell avoid defeat at Livy on the assumption that uh, St. Mirren didn't beat Rangers on the Sunday. So you can still get in with a defeat. A draw, you're still waiting on other results, but a draw, a draw is actually about as good as a defeat, really. A draw, you're still waiting on other results. It obviously means that the Livy. Yeah, a draw actually is the same as a defeat because if Aberdeen won, they'd still go above us on goal difference. Um, so you would still need um, Levy, Levy to avoid defeat. So it's win and it's entirely in your own hands. Don't win and you're waiting on other results. So Harry, will we go to Tencastle? And what I'm going to say is Will we be in the top six walking out of the uh, Roseburn stand at five o'clock on Saturday? Uh, well, you'll find me deep before admitting we're going to get beat by heart, so obviously we're going to pop six out. Oh, mate, mate. Uh, Greg, top six, yes or no? No. I'm going to say no, but I don't think we're going to get beat. I think we'll draw, and I think Aberdeen and Livy will win their games and go above us. We've been an absolute arse to be honest. Aye. So yeah, that's the way that's the way we're gonna do it. We've not got yeah, we've got to do it. I think Oh wait, actually. If we draw and Levy win, 
we go above Motherwell. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so if we, if we draw, it pretty much all comes down to Aberdeen Ross County. If there, if we draw, <laughs> if I, we I draw, if we get a draw, we're in the top six as long as Aberdeen didn't win. Right. Right, well, you, we can literally hear the cogs in your Aye. head turning. So let's move this on. Let's move this on. Right, game. I'll be honest. I think our only hope of, if I'm being brutally honest, our only hope of getting a point is it being nil-nil, and I'll tell you why. Unless, so actually, does anyone know why Christian Dodge wasn't in the squad? And I know he's not been great, but was he injured at the weekend? I have no idea. Honestly, he was getting pictures honestly, and that I, afterwards. I, I, because I don't know about my done. my issue is I don't see a front three in Melkerson, Jasper, and uh, Muller getting any change at Hearts back three unless we can pass it around them. You know, unless we have the confidence because they'll play three four three as well, maybe three five two. I think any. I think that's what they've still been playing unless they've changed formation. Unless we can literally go man for man and pass it around them and play well and, you know, like beat them that way, I don't think your Melkers and your Jaspers, your Mullers are going to get any change out of a back three of what's probably going to be Halkett, uh, Kingsley and Sibic, I think. I think Suter's injured. Um, in terms of that's just far too physical for that front three. I think you've even seen it at times at the weekend as well, Melkers and I think got filled a lot of the time, but he didn't get any change in there out of Dundee United's back three, and that would be the worry for me. I'm not sh- quite sure that we've got the physicality up front to get us up the pitch at Tyne Castle. I think if we're going to win, it has to be total Maloney ball. You know, like we go and we just pass them off the park. I think it's the only chance we've got to win in the game. What do you think? Um, well, uh, look... I, I, yeah, the... <clears throat> on you go, Greg. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> All right, well, I was going to say, I think the, the main positive is the heart of their midfield, that Beningame, yeah. um, is just a frail wee kid. Um, so he's out the game. He, sh- he shat out of playing Hibs in back-to-back games, and now he's feigning an injury for the rest of the season. It's pathetic. Um, so he's out. <laughs> wonder, if Hearts fans are, wonder if Hearts fans are wanting him at least as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I genuinely think that's a massive um, bonus for Hibs. Um as much as I didn't like the boy, he has been pretty good for them this season. Um, the the main worry for me is Craig Gordon loves a wonder save. You saw it again at the weekend against Ross County. Nice. Um, and I think Hibs are going to surprise people. I think we're actually going to put in quite a good performance, but I think he's going to cause quite a bit of ball ache. I think that Hearts' defence is incredibly overrated, and I think that he's bailed them out on quite a few occasions this season. Um yeah, no, that, that that's the main threat. The, the main the main problem for me isn't the fact I don't think we're going to go and create no chances. I think we're going to go and create chances and not take them. Um, and I think it's going to be a very frustrating day because we know for a fact we've played Hearts before and genuinely had 20 shots before they've had one and we've lost the game 1-0. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't think we'll put in a bad performance, but I just think we're going to feel very frustrated come 90 minutes. I think... Craig, I know I've started, just I'll get you in. One big point for us, I still think we're better in the middle of the park. I, I do. So at the weekend, they lined up their midfield four of this. So, although, to be fair, I think Liam Boyce might be dropping in. But I can't, I, this, it looks like, this looks like it would be right. It was a bat three, Sibic, Halkett and Kingsley, Cochrane left wing back, Halliday and Haring in the middle of the park, Aaron McEnough right wing back, not sure how accurate that is. Liam Boyce, Sims, and Mackay. Now, for me, if that's what they go with off the bench, they brought they brought uh, Josh Janelli and Ben Woodburn for McInniff and Sims, but they only had two, four, six players on the bench at the weekend. So I don't know how fit. I don't know if Cammy Devlin's available for them. I would back Jake Doyle, Hayes, and Joe Newell to get the better of the Andy Halliday and Peter Harrick. I think that's an area of the park that we can have some success. And if it's Alex Cochran or if it's Andy Halliday moved out to Wineback or whoever, because uh, it looks like that Atkinson might be injured or, and let, you know, no doubt they'll end up being available. But again, I would give us the edge right across that midfield four. If it's if we play the same four that played at the weekend, I think our midfield's better. 
personally. And I think that might give us some hope. Um, what's your thoughts on the game, Greg? And what do we need to see from Hibs? What do we need to see for Hibs? <clears throat> Goals for a start. Maybe be good. Um, I don't know. I wanted, to, I wanted to see us be aggressive in possession, aggressive out of possession with the press. Um, I want to see us get the ball forward, get the ball down the wings. Just get balls in the box in a decent area where people can attack them. I think you're probably right. Newell and, and Doyle Hayes could definitely get the better of um, Halliday and Haring. Um, but we need, to, we need to ensure that we're solid at the back as well. Um, I, I just... It's a derby, it's a difficult one to call. You never know what's going to happen, but we need, we need to be aggressive as possible um, from our side and, and, and see what happens. But yeah, we need to get the ball moving quickly. Um, be quick, be sharp with it. So I think it's going to, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be quite, quite physical if we, if we start playing the way that they want to play. So we need to try and counter that, that we're playing good football. Yep. What um, what would you be looking at? Team selection, Harry. Run us through what your starting eleven would be just now. Um, obviously, we don't know full availabilities and stuff, but let's assume Jasper's all right. Um. Oh, I I reckon I'm going to upset a few people here. Um, but I would probably rock the exact same team. Um, but I would put um, what do you call them? Clark on the right side, pretty much the defence that Greg said Shift earlier. Shifted one along. left. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I would actually put Dre right in. Um, I would start him over Jasper because I think Jasper could be an impact sub. That Because against Hearts across the years, second half, we always have a bit more luck, I find. Um, so if we can have Jasper come off the bench and just have someone run at them when they've got a bit more tired yeah, legs. A bit stretched, uh, right? Exactly. Um, so that's what I would do. Chris Miller team. keeps his place in the team, yeah? Yeah, no, um, he, he shut me up. I thought he's been pretty lacklustre so far, but I thought he was pretty good at the weekend, as you said. He nearly, he should have set up the winning goal. We we're really nice. Well, he was play. shite for eighty nine minutes. <laughs> uh, no, and, and, and in essence, he won us a penalty as well. If the referee That's wasn't true. acting a hard man, um, so I thought Muller did have a pretty good game. Um, so I know I'd start him. Like the thing is, you, you bring in your marquee players to play in games like that. Like we've not brought him in to try and bleed him into Scottish football. He should be getting thrown in the deep end and playing well for us. So I uh, know I'd definitely start Muller and I'd put. Jasper on the bench for a round. I'm making changes like uh, Greg, I'll let you come, come at you though. Let's run me through your starting 11. Uh, uh, goalkeeper. It's going to, uh, Dabrowski, it's going to be a 3 4 1 2 for me. Okay. Um, I would have Dabrowski goalie, uh, Harry Clark, <clears throat> um, Bushiri and Hanlon, reluctantly. Um, right, right middle will be Cadden, Doyle Hayes, New Doig on the left. I'd actually like to see Jasper playing in behind, to be honest. Um, a lot of people criticise his end product, so I think if we stick him in behind the strikers, he can offer us that little bit through the middle. Um, and it'll be Melkerson and Muller up front. I don't see why we wouldn't go with two, to be honest. I think we need to be aggressive. So. How many changes, are, if any, is that? Is that the same 11? That's, that, just... that, that, that's no changes. I just, right, I'm changing quite a bit here. Um, Dabrowski and goals, back three, um, would be Rocky, Hanlon, Stevenson, Clark right wing back, Doig left wing back, although to be fair, you know, I'm going to be realistic, it'll be Stevenson left wing back and Doig left centre half, I think we've seen enough now to think that if they both play Maloney, will keep Doig at centre back and Stevenson in front of him. Midfield, two of Newell and... Uh, Drake Doyle Hayes, Chris Cadden in front of Harry Clark as part of the three, Ewan Henderson, and if he's available, Christian Deutsch. Wow. I think we need to be added. Really would you really chuck Doig? Doy, uh, Doy if he's available, game. if he's available, I think he'll be more effective than Melkerson, at least from the start. If he's yeah, mm, slower than me. But I'm painfully slow. I don't. I would maybe start. No, do you know? I don't know. I'd, it's a toss of a coin for me whether you go. Because I think I want strength on the wing, you know, which I think means you have to go one up top with that, you know. I think because I think you need to get 
I want Clark and Cadden both on the right. I want Stevenson and Doig both on the left. You know, like I want that in terms. Like I want the strength on in terms of going forward and defensively. Um, who's like we can say what we want about Hearts are a pretty decent team. They've scored plenty of goals this season. I don't think they've lost too many games at Tynecastle. Like you are going to have to be on it at the back. I'm not convinced by Rocky as in the middle of a back three. Um, I'm not entirely sure Sean Maloney is either. I think that could have been some of the thinking as to Hanlon being at the middle of it at the weekend and Doig being on the left. Um, I think experience is important in these games. Like getting someone like Lewis Stevenson back into the team is the thing is as well. Lewis Stevenson will play. You know, if you if you play Stevenson, you play Hanlon, then you've got two sent two two in the back three, or whether it's Josh Doig. Like you, you will still have players in there that want to play, but Jasper Muller, even Henderson at a push. I'm not sure they're going to do it for you off the ball, and I think our big threat could be on the counter. And Muller's just not fast enough to play counter attack in football, is he? But you know, like that's like I don't think I, he might have signed as a winger, but he's not a traditional get the ball, speed star, hit the byline winger. I think he is more of a sort of inside forward, if you like, even number ten. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that's what Sean Maloney will go for, um, but I think I do think we need to go physical in terms of getting some just some strength in numbers and key areas of the park and experience as well. I think players like Cadden, Harry Clark, I know Harry Clark's young himself, but he looks like he can sort of handle himself. He was really composed at the weekend. Stevenson's, Hanlon's, Doyle Hayes's, Newell's, etc. I think they're going to be really, really important at the weekend if we're, if we're going to go to Tynecastle and win. Um, and, you know, if we can play that team, I'd be confident of a win, actually, because you'd still have the likes of Muller of Jasper to come off the bench, but Melkerson, if you go with my first team. Um, I'd be surprised if Deutsch came straight in, but I just, I feel like you always need to, look, I think you would agree, passing out from the back is very much our first choice, right? But you've seen against Hearts at Easter Road that Sean Maloney will go direct if we need to. You can't go direct to Melkerson. You know, like, it's just not an option, I don't think. And I think if Melkerson plays up there on his own, then we're going to be quite one-dimensional in terms of just having to play out. And I think that could end up being a bit of an issue because Hearts could press us well and really keep us penned into our sort of half if we've not got a proper out ball. I don't know what you think about that. I don't know. It's a difficult one because I don't know how they're going to set up, but I think that we need Doig and Cadden on the wings. They can carry the ball. They're good in possession. They, they, they can be direct. So we obviously need an out ball. Um, I don't know. I think we need to try and be unpredictable in, in the final third, though. Um, that's part of the reason why I would have Miller and Melkerson playing up front as a two. Miller can drift out wide. Melkerson yeah. can also do that. So it's that level of unpredictability. But yeah, we, we just need we need to try and make the pitch as wide as possible, I think. Um, yeah. Get the ball out wide. Get pushing them, be aggressive in the press, keep them back, sort of pin them back to an area where they can't really hurt us as much. So very well them playing passes along the back, back three or whatever. But yeah, we just need to press them and and work our way out wide and win in possession. Just what you hear the hot take. I reckon Absolutely. if he's fit, I reckon Josh Campbell starts, and I think he starts, and he just gets told, um, don't let that Mackay yeah, breathe. Um, I reckon he just wants to suffocate him because most of Hearts' attack this season has went through him um, especially since Beningame went out he's the entire focal point of their play um, so we do need to have a player that just kind of hounds him the entire game I think that Jake Doyle Hayes probably can do it but I think just with the engine of him I think that Maloney would prefer to see Campbell do it the entire game not for his on the ball ability but for his off the ball ability I would yep. be surprised to see Campbell start no, I don't think that's a bad. I don't think that's a bad shot. I think we've been fairly critical of Campbell this season, but I think what we would have to be entirely honest about is he stands up well in the big games. I think he's played. He's played well in the derby against Hearts. He played well in the League Cup semi final. He played well against Celtic at Easter Road. It was. I think these are these are the games where Josh Campbell thrives in a game against Dundee United at home, where Hibs are going to have sixty five percent of possession. Not so much. Like right. so, I don't. I don't think that's a bad shot at all, Harry. Um, I think. Let's get a little bit of positivity into this. 
perhaps the results haven't been great, but would we say that generally this season, when we've had to win, when the pressure has been there, or it's been a bigger game, we have generally probably performed better. Looking at Celtic, getting the drop point off Celtic, you've seen how difficult that's been sort of since Christmas with only teams that's taken points off them. We've played pretty, we've beat Rangers in a League Cup semi final. Um, we've had two very competitive draws with Hearts. The two, in fact, sorry, the, 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 the first two games against Rangers this season in the league, really competitive. Uh, refereeing decisions sort of cost us in the games. Is there an argument to say that this Hibs team maybe do perform a little bit better when their backs are against the wall? There's an argument for that, but that makes it all the more frustrating mm-hmm. ultimately, because we've not done it often enough. Um, I, I hope we do put enough good performance when our backs against the wall, because they absolutely are. A win and they're pretty much secured top six, so our backs are well against the wall. We just need to go out and perform and, and do all that we can to go in the game. Yep. What about yourself, Harry? How, so, you've said you want back Hibs to get beat, so score prediction for me, please. 3-0. Three 3-0. Now. Three now. Goal scorers? I reckon Big Muller. Muller does the business. Sticks finger up at me um, just for slagging him off so much. <laughs> um, and then Melkerson gets a goal, makes up for his miss the other day because everybody's like, oh, he's cost us top six. Actually, secures it because he's the big man. And then, of course, he comes on super sub, as I said. Lewis Stevenson scores a third. <laughs> nice. Greg, score prediction? No, no. No, no being enough to get us top six or not? I would love to say yes, but I don't think it will be enough. I think I think we've shot our chances up the world, to be honest. Mm. I'm going to have Hibs scraping it. 1-0. 1-0 for me. 1-0. And do you know what? I think it's going to go down as a... as a 2-2, you know? Like, as a... It's going to be up there, I think. And we're going to go there... We're going to win a tough game. We're going to play all right, win one now, get top six. I've talked myself around, I think. The, the team I picked, I like. I think that team goes, competes, and does well. And I've talked myself around for a draw to a one nil win. And I think we kick on from there. I think we kick on and finish fourth. I, 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 I'm... <sighs> Is it bad that I think we could finish fourth, but I also think we could finish 11th? Yeah, like, that is bad, like, but like, that would, like, would they put it past like, us? Like, 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 I'm really, like, I think if we finish top six, we finish fourth. I think if we finish bottom bottom six, we finish 11th. Like, I'm really, really, that's really where my head's at. I can see this weekend, we either go and we kick on and we win, and we have a really strong end to the season, or we get beaten, the league form just pitters out, and we end up having to fucking go to fucking Perth on the second last game of the season to try and fucking like I can just oh give this get, but we're gonna win. We're gonna win one now and we're gonna get the job done. Um what's the like, what's the chance of us ending up in the relegation battle? <laughs> ah, I've, I've, ah, I've, I've actually not really seen the league table to that. Nah, like it. It, it would take a miracle se- run from St Johnston for it to happen. We're seven opinion. clear of St Johnston in our the same thing. If, if we, if we sorry, win one eight. game, we're safe. We're eight. We're win eight. one game and you're safe. We're like. we're we're this is mad. Eh? This is insane that we were talking about win one game and we're safe. Like, <laughs> we probably are. Like, it's eight we actually better seven, get our but... act together next season because this is bullshit. <laughs> this is bad. Give them time, but this is bad. No. Well, we don't want to end it on that. Uh, so, Harry, go and just yeah. give us a rant about why Hibs are going to beat Hearts and we'll wrap it up on that. I will, if you think about it, as I said, their best player in the world, best player in the league, Benny Beningame, has feigned an injury. He's not even feigned an injury for the two weeks we're playing them. He's scared that we're going to play them three weeks in a row. So just to be safe, he's shat out the entire rest of the season. The boy's a bitch. Benny Beningame, done. Craig Gordon pulls out a wonder save a month. He got that out of the way at the weekend. That's, that's Craig Gordon ruled out of the game. So we're absolutely okay. sorted there. Robbie Nielsen is the scruffiest, greasiest excuse of a man that the planet has ever seen. He's done. So therefore, Sean Maloney gets subbed on. Hibs are going to pump hearts, and that's the end of the story. That was it for me. Huh? What Harry said, I. Nah, I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't agree, but yeah. You, go, you don't agree that Robbie Nielsen's scruffy? 
No, he's, he's an absolute tramp, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he, I don't know why he can think of his hair back. Greg Gordon's a cut, Greg. Get, put it in. Correct, correct. <laughs> um, yeah, he has a... Yeah, he has that. Um, <laughs> Elaine listens, can't be saying my that. My mum listens to this, so I can't be saying <laughs> horrible words like that. I don't say any words, kids. Um, yeah, no, Robbie Nielsen's uh, such his hair back when he's got zero at the front of his head, so... <laughs> Strange, but it's just a hair's tramp. Right. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I think we'll all be um, in the Rosebun for opening at about 11 o'clock on Saturday. Um, So feel free to come and join us for a couple of pre-match beverages before we all go and endure 90 minutes of hopefully really enjoyable torture, but no doubt it'll be torture either Mm. fucking way. Thank you very much for listening, and we will be back next week reviewing one derby and previewing another one. What a time to fucking be alive. Cheers. Goodbye. Good night. God bless.